All right, so we'll uh, start on problem 21 here. Um, in problem 21, we want to find the average rate of change of h of x equals 7 plus x squared from x equal negative 2 to x equal 1. Okay, um, so let's see. In, in that problem, um, we always want to take uh, f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So a is negative 2 and b is 1. So f of b, h of b, minus h of a divided by b minus a. Okay, that's uh, h of 1 minus h of negative 2 divided by 1 minus a negative 2. Um, the bigger number is always going to come first, by the way. Okay, so h of 1, well, here's h of x. When I plug in 1, I get 7 plus 1, that's 8. Minus h of negative 2. So when I plug in negative 2, 7 plus negative 2 squared is 4. So 7 plus 4 is 11. Uh, 8 minus 11 would be up top. Divided by 1 minus negative 2. 1 minus negative 2, that's 3. 8 minus 11, that's negative 3. So negative 3 divided by 3 gives me 1. Uh, it gives me negative 1. Okay, so negative 1 would be the, the answer to this. Um, now the average rate of change is the same formula as the slope of a line. We'll look at the slope and do a lot with lines in chapter 2. Okay, so uh, uh, it's kind of an intro to what's coming up later there. Okay, um, in problem 22, uh, it says the graph of a function is given. Identify where f is increasing and where f is decreasing. Write your answer in set builder notation or interval notation. Okay, so here's our here's our graph. Now, where are we increasing and where are we decreasing? Well, where are we rising and where are we falling as we scan the graph to, from left to right? You always scan the graph from left to right. Okay, and it's all about x when we give our answer. So here's uh, x equals negative 2. If I scan the graph from negative infinity to negative 2, the curve is falling. Okay, so I'm going to be decreasing on that part of the graph. I'm going to be decreasing on the interval in negative infinity to negative 2. And then we're rising after negative 2. Okay, so we're going to be increasing on the part of the graph where uh, we're at negative, negative 2 to infinity. Okay. Um, now, we don't care how high the curve goes or how low the curve goes. Sometimes students will mess this up and they'll be talking about y. Don't do that. It's all about x. Okay, so I don't care how high the curve goes or how low the curve goes. It's all about x. So we're changing at x equals negative 2. Right, we go from decreasing to increasing. Okay. Uh, part B, is the average rate of change positive or negative from uh, negative 4 to negative 1? Okay, um, well, so here's negative 4 and here's negative 1. Now, the average rate of change, again, the, that's the same thing as the slope of a line. So if I draw a line going from negative 4 to negative 1, that would be uh, slanted in this direction. Okay, A line that is slanted in that direction has a negative slope to it. A line that is slanted the other way has a positive slope to it. Okay, So a line that has a, a negative slope to it means I can construct a capital N for negative, whereas you can't do that with the positive case. Okay, the slope is really, really important to us. We're going to talk a lot about that in the next chapter. Okay, so the average rate of change 
will be a negative number going from negative 4 to negative 1. Okay. Uh, let's try another one here. So problem 23 is next. It says that the graph of f is given. Identify where f is increasing, where f is decreasing. Um, okay, so yeah, here, here's our function. Okay, where are we rising, where are we falling? Okay, um, well, let's see. So uh, now we're using an increment of 2 on the x-axis. So here's a negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I'm using an increment of 10 on the y-axis. So here's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 0, 10, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50. Okay, so where are, we, where are we rising as we scan the graph from left to right? Well, it looks like anywhere that's to the left of negative 4, the curve is rising. Okay, so I'd say that I'm increasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 4. And where else are we going to be rising? Uh, here's 2. So anywhere that's bigger than 2, the curve is also rising as I scan the graph from left to right. So uh, I'd say that we're increasing on the interval 2 to infinity also. Okay, Where we decreasing means where we falling as we scan the graph from left to right, okay? Um, it looks like everywhere that's between negative four and two, the curve is falling, okay? Now, whenever you give the, the intervals for where you're increasing or decreasing, it's always going to be open intervals, okay? So I want parentheses everywhere with this stuff, okay? There's no brackets. And uh, so this will be my answer. Okay, um, problem 24 is, uh, is next. So we have the functions f and g, and we want to find f composed g of x and simplify that. So f composed g of x means that you're going to plug g into f everywhere that you see an x in f. We've only got one x showing. Okay. So g of x is 2 over x, right? So everywhere that I see an x in f, I need to replace that with 2 over x. Well, let's go ahead and replace that x with 2 over x. And I got 1 divided by 2 over x minus 5. Okay, they, they want us to simplify this. So I got 1 divided by 2 over x minus 5. 5 is the same thing as 5x over x. And so I'm getting my common denominator down under. And therefore, I can get a single fraction down under. So I have 1 divided by 2 minus 5x over x. And because I'm dividing by a fraction, the rule would be to flip the denominator and multiply that. So I got 1 times x divided by 2 minus 5x or that'd be x divided by 2 minus 5x. Okay, and that would be as simplified as I can get it. Okay, so go ahead and circle that result there. That'd be the answer. And uh, now just like any other function, there's input values and there's output values. Okay, so like in part B, they want us to find uh, f of g of 2. Well, that means that uh, g of 2 is um, is uh, 2 over 2 is 1, right? So everywhere that I see an x in f, I need to replace that with 1. 1 divided by 1 minus 5 is negative 1 fourth. Or, you know, a, another way to do this is I can plug uh, 2 into the simplified function that I found in part A, right? Because otherwise, what, like, why did I do this in part A if I'm not going to use this, okay? So if x is 2... I got 2 divided by 2 minus 5 times 2, 2 minus 10, is negative 8. So 2 divided by negative 8, 
That also gives me negative one fourth. Okay. Um, in part C, we want to state the domain of f composed g of x. Okay. By, by the way, we're we're going to do um, you know a, a lot of stuff with function composition uh, later on once we get into chapter four and um, and uh, you know we'll, you, like like you'll see more of that there. Okay. Um, and uh, so the point is to say that, uh, you know, th this is important. Um, and uh, now the domain of F composed G of X. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find the domain of G. Right, because G is being plugged into F. So I have to know what values to plug into G first before I can plug those numbers into F composed G. But here's g of x. I can't divide by 0, right? So just don't let x be 0. That'd be the domain of g. Now the domain of f composed g would be the set of all x such that x is not equal to 0. And then the second thing that I need to do is I need to look at the simplified version over here of f composed g, and I need to state its domain. So, well, I, I know I can't divide by 0 with that. So uh, if I set the denominator 2 minus 5x equal to 0, and I solve that equation, uh, add 5x and then divide by 5, it looks like x is equal to uh, 2 fifths, right? You know, that, that's what I don't want. I don't want 2 fifths. Because right, that's going to cause a problem with division by 0 here on, on this guy. So in all, uh, x can be any number. Just don't take 0 and don't take 2 fifths. Okay? Uh, so that would be the answer to that one. Okay? Uh, we'll pick up a problem 25 in the, uh, the next video there.